everybody. Welcome everybody and our international visitors this evening, whether they're transplants in the United States or visiting from Vancouver Island, Canada. Welcome, 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 beloved church family. And welcome to the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Paul Persuti, and I'll be your host tonight. I welcome you to our Midweek Oasis Wednesday night service. As you'll be able to experience tonight, our Wednesday night oasis is a place where we come together as a community to be spiritually refreshed between Sundays. Most Wednesday night services build upon the theme of the previous Sunday, sharing in a satsang style, expressing science of mind principles and practices with the intention that these gatherings be informal, intimate, and interactive. Our annual theme for 2024 is a grand rising, and our monthly theme for April was giant gentleness. I'll tell you about May and the announcements because last Sunday, Reverend Dr. Sunshine Michelle Coleman introduced ideas inspired by the talk title under that theme for April called Gentle Cosmicness. And tonight, our speaker will continue the exploration of this very same topic. So as we gather tonight, I really, really want to welcome you. When Reverend Sunshine first joined us, she extended an invitation and she says, please come to the center well. And to do so, she shared these six C's for us to consider and to incorporate. She said, please come with compassion. That's a heart of love and tenderness. Then she said, please come ready to exchange openly which she calls communication. Camaraderie, please come in camaraderie, which is coming in friendship and family. Come in harmony and ready to share. We call that communion. Come in partnership and cooperation, and she calls that collaboration. And finally, come in consciousness, come in an in spiritual awareness and truth. So as we move into the program tonight, these six C's are the premise of sharing a wonderful evening with you tonight. If you're new to our community, and if you're visiting here on Wednesday night for the first time, we especially welcome you. But we encourage you to explore our homepage at our website, www.oaklandcsl.org and click on the I'm new icon and look at the left lower corner of that page to submit your email address. Once you do, you'll begin receiving the Village News newsletter once a week in your email. It has all of the information on what is happening at our center in the coming weeks. Before we get started with the talk, we're going to ask you to please mute your own audio microphone during the service tonight. When you do this, it will improve the quality of our recording and tonight's transmission. And please stay to the end of the service where I'll be delivering some special and important announcements. So it's time to introduce our speaker. As I said earlier, she'll be speaking on gentle cosmicness. Her name is, pra is Maureen French. We call her practitioner Maureen French officially. But not only is she a newer practitioner, but Maureen also recently completed her service on the board of trustees as president. Whew, she can relax and now she can start talking on Wednesday nights. Maureen is just wonderful, and I'm so glad she's going to be with us tonight, and I'm thanking you in advance for being our speaker. So Maureen, as we do with every organized event at the center, we open with prayer. Will you be joining the honors? No, I would like to invite Constance to pray us in. Thank you. 
So let's just let's just take a breath. Hmm. Allow yourself to sink into that place of quiet, that place of stillness, that still small place within. that place of the divine most high. And while we know that, that that energy that we call the divine most high, that we call God exists everywhere uh, and uh, it is everything. Sometimes, at least for me, I feel it most when I go within that place of silence within. So just take another breath and go within. Just take a breath and know that you are God. That God is everywhere present, that God is all. God is the beginning and the end. It is the bowl without a rim. It is uh, the well without a bottom. It is, it is so fast, vast that our human mind can't even comprehend. And it is as close as the flutter of our eyelids. And that energy, that energy is an energy of divine love, a divine peace of divine grace. And so I just know that that's who, what my life is. And I know that that's the life of everyone on this call, everyone who's here now, everyone who will be joining us, everyone who even thought about coming. Because it is the life of everyone and everything. And so I just claim that this evening is good and very good. That 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 one energy that we call God speaks through Maureen tonight as she presents her ideas that those are the ideas that came through her as God and that she is sharing those tonight so that we can all benefit from them. And that we have a, a delightful time in discussion and in companionship and in community. And so I'm so grateful for knowing this truth. And so I just let this word go. And I'm so grateful that we're here together. And so please join me in saying, and so it is. And so it is, amen. So it is, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Constance. So hello everyone, thank you so much for, for being here. So I am here to talk about gentle cosmicness. So, that is, we go by themes for people that aren't familiar with the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living or the Centers for Spiritual Living. We go by themes that are assigned each month. And um, also we have a, a an annual theme as well. And so this week's theme is gentle cosmicness. And so when I first got the theme for this week, about and you know to to tell me what I was supposed to talk about I'll be honest I really wasn't that thrilled I was like what in the world is gentle cosmicness what is what is this supposed to be right and then I realized you know what I need to contemplate this I need to contemplate what does this mean because it at face value it doesn't mean anything so I thought about it and I thought a little bit more about it. And I realized that it really gentle cosmicness. If you think about it, it actually is very, it has depth and it's a complex words. It's complex putting it together, gentle cosmicness. So I figured this was a great, great way to do my first talk out of school to talk about gentle cosmicness. So are you ready to go down the rabbit hole 
of gentle cosmicness with me. All right. I see you, Missy. I see you, Alice. Thank you. So let's go. So when I was thinking about this, this gentle cosmicness, first I thought about cosmos, right? Cosmic is the cosmos. And when I think about cosmos, I looked it up to see the definition. And the one that stuck out for me was inconceivably vast. Cosmos, inconceivably vast. So to me, that's all encompassing. That's infinite. That's eternal, ever and ever unfolding. It includes the light and the dark, the dirty kitchen and the clean kitchen. It encompasses the chaos and the stillness. All of it is part of this inconceivably vast thing that we're calling the cosmos. And so then I think about gentle. Well, what does gentle mean to me in this context? Well, I think of kindness, calmness, tenderness, and comfort. But what most astounded me was that I see being gentle as practicing non-attachment. And so we typically hear of the term non-attachment in the Buddhist philosophy as the notion of flexible engagement with experiences without fixation on achieving specified outcomes. So let me read that again. Non-attachment is the notion of flexible engagement with experiences without fixation on achieving specified outcomes. Gentle is being flexible and not fixated on an outcome. So we're in this inconceivably vast cosmos and we're holding on gently. I came to understand that I can walk through my experience in life with a gentle cosmicness lens by approaching life, the people, places, and things and experiences in a gentle, also known as non-attached way to the inconceivable vastness of all that is the cosmos. I see the impersonality and the care and the tenderness in it. We are building out the vastness of the cosmos through how we are attached to our outcomes, to our experiences. So let me explain. How 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 does how do I come up with all of that, right? Well, I was having tea one day, right? And I went to my cupboard and I opened up the cupboard and I was trying to decide which mug I wanted to use for my tea. I know I'm not the only one that has different mugs for different moods. <laughs> but I decided I was going to choose this particular mug. And this mug I got from a thrift store in a small mountain town. The thrift store was called Grandma's Basement. And here's the mug, my little prop. It isn't anything grandiose. It's, it's a mug. As you can see, it's deep orange. It has earthy tones and it has a little design in it. When I found it, I remember being drawn to it. I remember picking it up and realizing that it wasn't going to match any other theme of mug in my cupboard. It wasn't something I would normally be drawn to. It symbolizes masculinity for me. It is earthy and grounding. It is ancestry. 
And I kind of feel like it has some African wisdom in it. So as I was appreciating what this mug means to me, drinking my tea, I realized that this mug means something deeper to me. That I see this mug as being a sacred object in my life. It's just a mug. But I feel connected to this mug in a spiritual way. There is a deeper meaning to this object that symbolizes and informs the science of mind principles in my life. It reminds me to remember that I am a spiritual miracle made up of stardust, having a human experience. I remember that I am here, right here, and now drinking my tea with this powerful creative force that created me and the mug and all that is everything. And that I get to drink out of this mug and connect with that truth. Okay, okay, and perhaps you're thinking, what does this mug have to do with spirituality and the gentle cosmicness of life? Well, as I would have it, it has a lot to do with it. First, if you haven't noticed, I'm pretty attached to this mug. This object that I purchased for a dollar is sacred to me. It gives me a feeling of love and comfort. I am attached to the feeling of groundedness that this mug gives me. I also have come to accept that this calling that I'm talking about to this mug or to other things isn't always understandable or rational. It just is a pulling or a, a feeling to that thing that connects us to that. I then went down the rabbit hole to about how attached I was to this mug by calling it sacred, by attaching these meanings and these feelings to this mug. What if I broke the mug? What if I lost the mug? At first I thought, man, I would be devastated. I could be really upset. And then I thought, you would be devastated over a mug? What? Yes, a mug. I would be sad since this mug is more than a mug to me. I got a, a got some connection to this mug and it points out my other attachments that I have to other things in my life. Not only do I have attachments to this sacred mug, I have attachments to my parts of my job, my relationships, my, pos and my other possessions that I have. And I assign those attachments. And I realize that these attachments, they serve me. By me seeing this mug as sacred, I get to go to a sacred place when I drink from this mug. It serves my creative experience. And these attachments create experiences that elicit thoughts and feelings in which send out vibrations to the cosmos. I can only cherish the mug in the moment for the cosmic inconceivable vast future is upon us. I may break the mug, I may lose it, it may get stolen. I believe that our vibration is how we communicate 
with the cosmos? How do we hold our moments? Are we anxious, scared, or worried? The moment creates a vibration and that is where the gentleness comes in. I have a quote from a Japanese Buddhist philosopher, Dosaku Ikeda. Living here on earth, we breathe the rhythms of a universe that extends infinitely above us. When resonant harmonies arise between this vast outer cosmos and the inner human cosmos, poetry is born. Being gentle with our choices and thoughts, holding them lightly, I can hold the mug tightly and be absolutely devastated if it crumbles. Or I can hold it gently, lightly, and enjoy it in the moments that I have it, remembering the feelings after it's gone. The vibration, the thoughts, feelings, reactions in the moment matter. I believe that we are sending out waves of vibration into the cosmos. We are creating a vibration every moment we spend time on something. Don't worry, don't worry. It's not all on you, your thoughts, right? We're part of a whole cosmos. We are co-creating with that one mind, that one mind, the cosmos. We are part of the vast cosmos. We can choose how we create with it, given how we use our power of thought. So I choose through this practice of understanding gentle cosmicness, or also known as vast non-attachment, so that my vibration, attitude, beliefs, thoughts are reaching the cosmos in a frequency that is holding the beautiful miracle of the moment lightly and fully invested in the experience that the mug or whatever the object is that's giving me. That is a sacred moment, a divine moment. The more we are able to tune into our gentleness, holding things lightly, our compassion and our love, the more we are influencing the trajectory of our existence. This not only will make our own lives better, but it will influence and create a better cosmos for our future generations. We are doing this for the love of the whole cosmos. Everything that it holds, the things that we know about and the things that we don't. We do this business of non-attachment with the knowing that the mug is always there. Even if it were to break, it is one with the power. As we expand our ability to provide this gentleness, this way of being, we are expanding the vibration and the cosmos. Another quote by Maria Montessori, an Italian physician and philosophy educator, says it really well. The purpose of life is to obey the hidden command, which ensures harmony among all and creates an ever better world. We are not created only to enjoy the world. We are created in order to evolve the cosmos. By practicing gentle cosmicness, I realize that I am the mug and the mug is me. 
the mug is just one unique expression of the connection, expression, vibration of the one mind. The mug is an expression of what exists elsewhere. What I have within me and the mug serves as a reminder of that truth. As we look around, we can find many sacred ways to connect. I choose to surrender to the wisdom and connection I have for this sacred object. Moments with this mug I have are divine. To remember the feeling it gives me when I hold it. Knowing the experience of this mug, the feeling connection I have goes with me into the cosmic vibration and can be tapped into even if the mug is no longer in its physical realm. For I have experienced the deep connection and feeling. This experience, for however long I have the physical object, allows me to connect to that feeling and conviction to infinity. For I have had that feeling and that experience. So be in the miracle of the moment. Vibrate at a frequency of gentle cosmicness. The vast non-attachment as we will have a world that works for all. No matter what it is, hold it with gentle cosmicness that non-attachment vast oneness. Enjoy it now and until it is no more, you can tap in to that feeling, to that experience. This is the vibration of oneness, wholeness, balance and trust. So I would like to open it up for Questions, comments. I do have a question, a couple questions. Um, and I'll give you a, I'll say the question and then, you know, you can have a couple, uh, like a 30 seconds to think about if you wanted to answer. So um, the one question is, what are some ways that you contribute or can contribute to this gentleness that is pushing out into the ethers, into the cosmos. What are some ways you are contributing or can contribute to push out the gentleness into the ethers? And then, of course, any other comments or questions. So you can go ahead and raise your hand like the Zoom thing. Um, or what else can you do? Oh, there we go. We got Missy has a question. Missy. Yeah. Or whatever. Uh, a question or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, comment. Um, yeah, I love that idea. I love that idea of the vast non-attachment. That's great. And, uh, and the idea that we have the sacred things that, um, and then they're gone, but the, what, as you said, like, once you have the connection to the sacred, like, just find it in another thing, you know, like, you know, it's out there, <laughs> use the thing that you have in this moment. So I love that. And, um, and then, uh, the other thing was with your question, um, it's not about an object that reminds me of that, but I heard an interaction with somebody recently where they were, um, my experience of them <laughs> uh, was that they were bringing some tone that was a little bit um, abrasive. And an earlier version of me would have been like, what's that tone about? And wanted to, to lean into the tone and lean into whatever my story was about the tone and whatever, you know, my triggers are around that. And, 
Instead, I just took a breath and I did the whole, you know, namaste, the divine in me recognizes the divine in them, whatever that story is, whether I'm making it up or whether there was tone there that had some perception, that's about them. It's not about me. So to me, that's like, that allowed me to be back into just the moment and looking to, uh, you know, as Sean Jinright talks about the idea of um, having a transformational experience with this person as opposed to a transactional experience. So they don't need to show up in any particular way because I can still have an experience of the divine. So I hold lightly. Uh, I have non-attachment to the form in which they're showing up and instead seek to um, connect with the divine in that moment. So that's sort of what that conjured for me. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So kind of going going within and reminding yourself that this person is sacred no matter how they're showing up. Yeah, and that I don't need to hold on to an idea that people are supposed to show up in any particular way, right? That I can hold things lightly. I can just be present knowing the divine is everywhere present regardless of form. Anybody else? I see Peggy. Peggy. Go ahead. You're muted. Oh. Okay, I really enjoyed hearing your analysis and the breakdown and bringing us back to spiritual principle through this whole conversation. I wanted to start by saying that, and I enjoyed um, being reminded of a different kind of definition to the word gentleness. And <clears throat> what I think I'm talking about is um, the um, connections that we all have with one another, whether we feel it, whether it's conscious, whether it's unconscious or unfelt, um, it is known, not just believed in me. And so I, um, felt that the growth consciousness or the growth gentleness um, and consciousness of life shows up in choices um, that I have to face uh, moment by moment every single day all the time. And and um, it, it's the big C and choice. I, I have a choice to, to do this for myself, to cherish. That's the, my other C that I often try to remind myself of, to cherish who and whose I am. And so what you, this wonderful talk you put together, because um, when I saw the title and I had to choose what I was going to speak on this for the month of May, I said, oh, I'm glad Maureen's speaking on that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm just gonna, you know, get to all of that, but um, I think that um, we you know, to your question, which is, you know, what are some ways that I can contribute? Another C, by the way, um, uh, you know, to this gentleness um, that is pushing out into uh, the ethers. That gentleness is that wonderfulness of um, recognizing that I can really tap into how I feel. And I like to use the example of when I'm listening to somebody talking like you or whether I'm having a conversation, um, no matter what buttons get pushed in me that uh, may, uh, I think I want to talk, M Missy, thank you for bringing this up, that buttons get pushed in me. Uh, that may take me off on a tangent and take me actually on a different branch of the of the same tree. But I like I like the fact that by knowing that I can be gentle, I can be gentle with my feelings. I can I can recognize them and connect with that person, whether I'm in agreement, disagreement, I can be curious rather than anything else. And I can be even curious about my own behavior in my own private little apartment. I'm getting ready to make some choices. I've got to write something. I got to call somebody. I can be gentle and I can contribute to the 
to one of my favorite sayings is peaceful planet. I can contribute in, in, in a way towards my goal of having a peaceful planet by showing up like that. Mm. And that's what you brought up uh, tonight. And I so appreciate that I've had this opportunity to kind of think about that. Um, and um, in closing, I would say that um, the mug was a wonderful representation <laughs> of something that could, can be, not should, but can be a nothing. Mm -hmm. It can be that, and yet it can be a great something, mm -hmm. which is an extension of oneself because there's only one of us here kind of thing. Yeah. So thanks, Maureen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, and I think that, you know, Peaceful Planet I mean, the the vibration and the frequency that we are putting out, I mean, that's contributing to a peaceful planet, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Dodie, Jody, you, Dodie, you want to go, honey? Yes, yes. Morning is beautiful. I love it. I love the energy that comes from giant consciousness and you breaking it down so that it's an energy flow the softness that came from it gentle kindness tenderness it feels like uplifting like there's a breakdown of concrete things and it becomes energy flows mm -hmm. and i love holding it lightly that it, it it shifts what you feel if you're up against anything but if you're thinking of an attachment and expanding the vibration. I love the way you presented that. It, it gave uh, an energy flow and a vastness that we're all open to, but but it's going on whether we're aware or, or not. Yes. I'm complete. Thank you, Dodie. Love you. Thank you, Dodie. Megan, I think you had your hand up. Is that right? Thank you, Maureen. It was beautiful. Um, I think the biggest thing that came to my mind when you were speaking is is grace. In the gentleness is having grace with ourselves and each other as we move through these moments you know, with what everything happening in the world collectively, and then also individually, um, that we remind each other the gentleness, the gentleness to be a part of the whole, but also to take the time to do what we need to be gentle for ourselves, whether that's out in nature, our praying, our meditating, what whatever that means. Um, so it is this vastness that we get to participate in. And when you're in the chaos of it, it's hard to remember that. So bringing it down to something as small and concrete as a mug is a nice reminder that it is within everything, but it's also within every moment. So it's moving through those moments of consciousness and coming back to where we want to be and how we want to show up in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. I like that a lot, the grace. Yes, it is. Alice. Yes, Alice Knudsen. Hi, Alice. Hi. Oh, I have a little note here. Okay. Okay. Maureen, that was delightful. I knew you were going to do a fantastic job. I was so looking forward to uh, what you're going to present tonight. And I loved the way you said you had a prop. Um, I had some, I had, I didn't know what your prop was, but I certainly didn't think it was going to be an ordinary mug. But <laughs> what I loved about that is you should, First of all, you showed us how we can use ritual in our spiritual practice to gain meaning and understanding. And the other thing that I loved about it is 
it just demonstrated beautifully. God is in that mug. God is in everything, everywhere, constantly, all the time. And I just felt so happy inside when you talked about that mug because I could relate to your process. So thank you so much. And thank congratulations. You. you did a fabulous job. Thank you, Alice. I'm complete. I loved your whole notion around non-attachment, practicing non-attachment. And in the practicing of not being attached, that becomes an attachment, mm -hmm. right? So it is this whole wonderful, chaotically calm thing. Mm -hmm. And I loved how you tied it to a mug. It made me think, Paul, you need to find something to love. <laughs> you know, it's a, and I have plenty of that, but it, it just gave me a moment to think, I really like my yeah. mug, my, my church mug. Yeah, I love my <laughs> church mug too, yeah. But there's some mugs I don't like when they're small and they don't hold a lot of coffee and my hands don't fit in it, but some are just right, you know? Mm -hmm. Some fit me just right, and I love it. So th thanks for reminding me to love a little thing that reminds me to love the bigness and the vastness of it all. So you, I kind of do, I am attached to my mug. Sorry, Maureen, but I love it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I, do, I love my mug. I know. Who's got a mug? Anybody got a mug with them today? Show your mug. And the next spiritual question is, what's in your mug <laughs> that makes you love it so much? That's for another, <laughs> that's for another Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Maureen. Brilliant. Someone else, please? Is that Dr. Judith waving her hand down there? I see someone's hand up, but I can't tell who. Oh, Reverend Sally. Oh, Re okay. We'll go to Reverend Sally, then Dr. Judith, and then Judith Roberts. Uh, Maureen, what a fabulous talk. Um, I'm dittoing what everybody else has said before me. And forgive me, but I'm bringing in Dr. Dan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because Dr. Dan's what we call his zinger today, your talk and this topic has reminded me of that. He said, for every smile I give away, I get to back. And so that vibration tone of the smile being given out is returned twofold, tenfold. It just keeps the vibration going. So Thank you for vibrating us this evening. <laughs> yes, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Reverend Sally. Dr. Judith was waving her hand before Judith Rob. I have too many Ju No, I have plenty. I have enough Judiths in here. Dr. Judith, please go. And then we'll go to Judith Roberts. And if you can unmute yourself, Dr. Judith. There we go. Okay. There you go. Um, I was glad to see the mug. The mug reminded me of a story uh, about a, a renowned teacher in an area in the, in the East. And everyone would come to see him and to hear his wisdom. And up on his uh, on a on a little shelf, he had this most beautiful vase. It just was beautifully made and just had a certain kind of energy. And but it was just up on this little uh, little shelf. And someone said to him, someone coming to visit to listened to his wisdom one day said 
don't you worry about that sitting up on there where anybody could go by and just kind of accidentally with their shoulder and they knock it and you know and they and it's so beautiful wouldn't you want to keep it in some more hidden place <laughs> and mm. he says he said i love it i love it very much and when i look at it i understand that it's already broken mm. and and so I don't, I don't, I'm not attached to that part of it. So it can be there for everyone to see. Anyway, I thank you for, for your talk and for allowing me to remember that story. And now I'm going to go and look at my own mugs and see which, <laughs> <laughs> which ones. Anyway, thank you. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Judith. I told you, Maureen, we'll be talking about your talk for weeks now. Thanks. Right. And our other beautiful Judith Roberts. Judith, please. Thank you. Um, Maureen, I just, <laughs> I loved your talk. And the, 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 you know, to me, it was kind of whimsical. This I, the, the, to make a mug, <laughs> the centerpiece of your talk and, and to have it um, and to go with that, you know, that that's, that that came to you and you went with it and <laughs> um, and it and it and it worked so you trusted you know you trusted that that's what came and you went with it and I love it because um and especially when she said it's a one dollar mug you know <laughs> <laughs> because it's just it's just representing that anything and everything can be and is sacred and you know it's the feeling in it it's our connection to it it's and, and anything can be that special to any one of us um however mundane you know however mundane um i just i just i just i just applaud you for um for rolling with that <laughs> cuz it must have been fun to put together and it and it and it worked you know you used that as the vehicle to communicate what you had to say and i thought you did it very well and i hope we hear more from you oh thank you Judith. thank you <laughs> I agree. Thank you, Judith. We've got about a minute for anybody that wants to throw in a last comment or statement or how you were moved. I think you get the drift, though, Maureen. Maybe it'll be me. It was brilliant, darling. Just brilliant. Thank you. Yes, let's everybody show her. Look at if you go into gallery view, you see a lot of clapping, snapping horns and jazz hands and hearts just great Maureen and there'll be a run on mugs at the dollar store next week right? <laughs> <laughs> oh so if there's no burning share of any kind let us move right into our next section which is our announcements that I promised earlier Peter, if you will, when you're ready. This Sunday on May 5th, Reverend Dr. Sunshine Michelle Coleman will be introducing our May theme of From Good to Great to Grand. And she'll be speaking on the subject of the inner landscape within that thing. <clears throat> our meditation is at 10 o'clock followed by our service at 10.30. And on Wednesday, May 8th, at our midweek oasis, mm -hmm. join practitioner Alice Knudsen for a deeper conversation on the topic, the inner landscape. Meditation is at 6.30 and services at 7 by Zoom. You go to the Oakland website and click services for the Zoom link. Join our 2024 daily community spiritual practice using the abundant book 40 day prosperity um in it in the plan by john randolph price today we're on the second day of the program using the second affirmation in the book please note this is the fourth time we're going through this book and and we've added it to our dr dan series 
um, on Wednesdays. We carve out time. So we're following along a group of 10 to 12 of us every day. We encourage you to follow along daily in the order that the affirmations appear. Thrive East Bay and Oakland Center for Spiritual Living will host the Hold Everyone Up concert on this Sunday, May 5th at 4 p.m. in our sanctuary. And it features Melanie Damore and the Wild Choir. Tickets can be purchased by visiting oaklandcsl.org events page on our events page. There will also be assistance in the courtyard after Sunday service and purchasing tickets online. It is this coming Sunday, so you can pick, order them, um, get them right there in the courtyard a little early before the show starts at four. So please spread the word and tell your friends and bring your friends and get your tickets today. The People of African Descent New Thought Group is hosting Celebrating Our Soul 2024, Consciously Creating Change. The conference happens August 1st through the 4th at Unity Village in Kansas City, Missouri. This is an opportunity to come together to learn and share spiritual principles to help improve lives and our communities. Early registration ends April 15th. So please visit their website at www.padntg.com. Our Spirit Treasure Bookstore has begun its May Spring Cleaning. Please donate your gently used spiritual books this month. Check out the 30% off table. And for more information, please go to bookstore at oaklandcsl.org. And of course, our bookstore is open right after Sunday service. So we have some great people that support us around the center. We want to recognize them, take a look at them and all the things they do. And oops, there's a picture of Paul Pursuti. Beware. He's doing the facilities thing. As well as Dorothy and Dal and Steve and Reverend Sunshine. And our board vice president, Beth Van Arkel, and the wonderful Susan Brecker, who helps us uh, coordinate facility events at the center. So when you see them, say hello and say thank you. Also, please visit csl.org to see what is happening within our Centers for Spiritual Living, the global organization. Lots of things going on the global website. Also, visit our website and sign up for our weekly newsletter. Again, it's oaklandcsl.org. And our newsletter is called The Village News. Remember to follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook for special updates and content you'll only find by liking and subscribing to Oakland Center. Please like us and subscribe to Oakland Center today. So with all of this wonderful news and happenings and excitement and connections and mugging around, you might say. It gives me a moment just to think how grateful I am um, to have our center and how much I enjoy being a part of this community. So I like to show that by um, donating time, treasure, and talent. So during our offering tonight, take whatever gift you have. If it's a it's a mug, hold it close to you and know you're sharing it with the cosmos via the Oakland Center. Um, if you would like to do something financially or sign up or volunteer, whatever gift that is, just hold it close to your heart and follow along as I read our affirmation. Joyously I give with an attitude of abundance, knowing that as I give, I do receive. And so it is. So with that in mind, you can donate on our website on the homepage, the little hearts up there. If you click on that, it'll take you to the next page. And on there's a ways to donate with credit card by mail, Zelle, by text, or you can join us um, on Sunday and put it in the offering basket. So however you contribute, we're grateful. And, and I thank you for everything that you do.
to help keep our center running. So I do want to say thank you for some things that are happening. Um, first, I want to again swing right back to um, our speaker tonight. And thank you so, so, so very much for, for the mug message. Wow, that was just terrific, Maureen. Uh, for weeks, we'll be talking about it. I also know Reverend Sally is in the group tonight, and I want to say thank you for her supporting us um, and appreciate her being with us tonight. I want to thank our opening prayer with practitioner Constance Chapman. Um, thank you all for what you do. Also want to give a shout out to our Reverend Sunshine, who gives us this platform to present on Wednesday nights more spiritual truth. So thank you, Reverend Sunshine. However, my group of mugs behind the scene that I love and adore are the ones that work on the AV team. And they don't work, they serve. And they do it joyfully and e makes everything easy and graceful for me. Big shout out to Peter up in Portland um, and Alice Herndon and Alice Knudsen, my Alice Squared. Thank you so much, you guys, for taking care of us and giving the space for Maureen to be comfortable to uh, mug around a little bit with us. Also want to give a shout to Steve Carter, administration uh, coordinator upstairs that puts all this together and gets it together for us and gives it to us. So thank you. Thank you so very much. So with all of that gratitude, it's always um, the time, Maureen, at the end to do... Um, a prayer to close us out. And I think you selected somebody. Do you want to call that person forward? Sure, I selected Alice Newton. Okay, everybody, just take a nice deep breath and allow your breath to take you inside to that place of stillness within where the power and the presence of the one resides. How good it is to know that God is all there is and that everywhere we look, everything we see, everything around us is of God, of that one vibration of love and light. And what a blessing it is to know this spiritual truth that God resides within us as ourself, as a unique manifestation of that one love and that one light. I give thanks for all that has transpired tonight, for Maureen and her generosity with all that she shared with us tonight, introducing us into the, the gentle cosmic, what is it? Gentle cos, gentle uh, cosmicness. And how she got us to inquire within ourselves and what a gift that she shared with us tonight. I am so very, very grateful. I give thanks to everyone that's participated tonight to make this possible and for our sacred community and the love that we share with the world as a result of coming together and being willing to be generous of heart. And so what, <clears throat> what a wonderful time we've had this evening. Our hearts are full and we just take this home with us and relax in the gentle cosmicness of life. And so please join me in saying right here and right now. And, and so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Amen.